America expects its presidents to be tenacious and tough. We have a long tradition of electing war heroes to the highest office in the land. But only one earned the nickname Unconditional Surrender. President and General Ulysses S. Grant. His battle record speaks for itself. But when it comes to remembering President Grant, there's one object that tells us the real story. And it's mightier than the sword. In the small village of Wilton, New York, a rustic wood frame cottage is home to the actual pencil that President Grant uses to preserve his badass legacy for the ages. To find out how a pencil packs so much power, we must look back to February 1885. Only eight years after leaving office, President Grant doesn't have a nickel to his name. The interesting thing with Grant is he was not real good as a civilian. He was not a good businessman. He ended up going into business with a man who was a crook and ended up losing all of his money. Grant is victim of a con. He loses over $200,000 in the deal, the equivalent of almost $5 million today. And he's concerned that he'll leave his family destitute. The aging former president needs to restore his bank account. One way in which he can make some money for his family is by writing his memoirs. So he starts shopping a book deal. Grant accepts a deal and begins writing. But the old general has more to worry about than creditors. He's battling throat cancer. He's looking at a very short time period. He knows that he's dying. He's in pain. And nonetheless, every day, he's writing away. This was a man who knew what the goal was. And it didn't matter how much it hurt. He had to get to that goal. Grant is in a race against time. By the summer of 1885, he is edging closer to death. Doctors recommend that he escape the sweltering New York City heat. So the former president retires to a cabin upstate in a town called Wilton. This is Grant Cottage on top of Mount McGregor, about nine miles north of Saratoga Springs, New York, where the 18th president of the United States was invigorated by the mountain air. Grant came here with two doctors, his wife, his daughter, his son. It's preserved exactly the way it was. All the furnishings that you see here are what was here at the time. But the most interesting artifact of Grant's stay here are some notes that he wrote in Grant's own hand. As Grant's condition deteriorates, he's unable to speak above a whisper. He communicates by writing notes and letters. This is a rack of hand-sharpened pencils that he used to make his various notes. He always preferred to write in pencil. Grant manages his pain by coating his throat with a mixture of water and cocaine. There's still a bottle of the actual medicine here at the cottage. Despite being in constant pain, Grant uses his pencils to write an astonishing 10,000 words every day. Grant was writing about 50 pages a day. This is a remarkable pace. And what's even more stunning was that his prose was very clear, it was very lucid, and it seldom needed editing. Grant finishes his biography on July 19, 1885. He dies just three days later. It's the first of its kind, and it launches an entirely new phenomenon. Ulysses S. Grant, as always, won in the end. The book was a smashing hit. He sold over 300,000 copies. In today's money, he made millions, and he took care of his family. And what he ends up doing is he ends up writing really the first kind of star biography of an American politician. And he's really going to create a genre of biography. The success of Grant's memoir inspired later presidents. So you have now a whole genre leading up right through Bill Clinton and George W. Bush of these multi-million dollar post-presidential book contracts.
France perseverance reveals a trait common among the toughest presidents.